Welcome to 2.4, where we're going to solve systems of equations by a different method called elimination. Here we go. Solving by elimination is a really good method, especially when you have like coefficients that line up. So you can add or subtract and you can uh, get rid of one of them. And it makes things a little bit easier in certain situations. So it's, it's good to know. Uh, the way it works is first you line up your equations. That means that all of your X's are in a row, Y's in a, in a row, and other numbers in a row. You multiply one or both uh, equations to get the same coefficient. Usually you want to try to get one that's negative, uh, so you cancel something out. You then add or subtract the equation. You solve the remaining equation, and just kind of like normal, once you get one answer, you can use that answer to substitute in, and then you can find the other answer. So let's try an example. Our first example, it's actually already lined up, so this is what they meant. So your x's are in a row, your y's are in a row, and then your other numbers are in a row. So that's what they're talking about when you line up the equation. So to solve it, your first step is line up the equation. Second step is uh, multiply to get sim similar coefficient. So these both have ones. Since there is no number there, it's an assumed one. And then you just add or subtract to eliminate one of the variables. So in this case, we are going to add the second one. So here's kind of what to look out for is when you're subtracting, make sure this negative sign hits all of those numbers. So you're gonna change the sign of all of those numbers. So what I kinda of like to do is if I'm gonna subtract that, I'm just gonna immediately go through negative, positive, positive. That's a way to remind me to make sure that I don't mess up a negative sign. So then you're just gonna add and, subt add and subtract going down or combining like terms, whatever you wanna call it. So we're just gonna add going down so that cancels out to zero. Uh, seven plus y is eight y equals 17 plus seven is 24. So then you would divide both sides by eight. So now we have y equals three. So that's an answer, but we're not done yet. Remember, this is a system, so we want x and y. But we're just going to take this, and we're going to plug it back into one of those equations. So let's see here. Which one looks easier? I don't know. They both kind of look the same. But I would pick that one just because there's not a coefficient there. But it doesn't matter which one you pick. You can pick either one you want. Uh, so... We're going to plug our y into that equation. So we've got x minus 3 equals a negative 7. We're going to plus 3 to both sides. That means that we have x equals 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, a negative 4. So that's our answers, but that's not how we want to write them. Remember, this is a point where two lines intersect. So we're going to write that as a point. Oh my gosh, what did I just do? as a point, so our x is negative 3 and our y is 3, and that's our answer. So looking at our next example, uh, the variables are already lined up, but you'll notice that the x's aren't the same, but the y's are. So great, it doesn't matter which variable we eliminate first, as long as we eliminate a variable. This time, they are opposite signs, so that makes it even easier. We don't have to multiply or subtract or anything like that. We just add going down. So what that's going to look like, we got 5 plus 3. And then our y's get canceled out equals 22 plus 42, which is something like 4, 5, 6, 64. So then from there, we would divide both sides by 8. Then we would have x equals 8. 
So we're not done yet. This is just our X. We're going to use that X. We're going to plug it back into one of the equations. Uh, doesn't matter which one, but that first one has slightly smaller numbers. So I don't know. I like it better. Uh, so we're going to just plug that in. 3 times 8 plus 2Y equals 22. So then we're just going to solve that. So 3 times 8 is 24 plus 2y equals 22. Uh, we'll subtract 24 from both sides. It's a weird looking 2, but whatever. So then we'll have 2y equals negative 2, y equals negative 1. That's our answers, but that's we're not quite done yet. We do want to put it into uh, a point form. That's a terrible looking 8. So we have x is 8, y is negative 1, and there's our answer. Okay, this time at number 3, neither of our variables line up neatly. So this is where we're going to have to multiply one of the equations by a number uh, to make them line up. So I'm going to choose this bottom equation. The reason I'm going to choose the bottom equation is because it doesn't have a coefficient in front of the x, so it just makes the math a little bit easier. And I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 4. Remember, multiply the entire equation by 4. So if we rewrite our whole thing, we have this top part, 4x minus 9y equals negative 42. The bottom part, negative 4x uh, minus 20y, because 4 times 5 is 20, negative 4. And then negative 4 times negative 4 is 8, 16, negative 16. So now we can just add going down. So our x's are going to cancel out. Then we're going to have negative 29y equals 6, 7, 8, 4, 5, and that is a negative. So then our y is going to be equal to 58 divided by 29, which is, I don't even know. 58 divided by 29. It's 2. Duh, I knew that. So then we're going to take that y equals 2, and we're going to plug it. I'm going to use this equation again because it just looks easier. So x plus 5 times 2 equals 4. So then from there, this is 10 right there. Uh, so now we have x plus 10 equals 4 minus 10 from both sides, x equals negative 8. So there's our answer. We're going to put it into a point form, negative 8, 2. Remember, it's x and y. So there we go. So looking at number 4, uh, when I just kind of glance at it, uh, 7 and 2, Seems like awful things to get to equal each other multiplying, but 6 and 3 doesn't seem like too bad. We can just multiply this bottom part by a negative 2. So let's do that. So again, we're doing elimination, so we're going to multiply this entire bottom equation by negative 2. That's going to switch this sign so that we can just add, and I don't have to worry about like negative signs and stuff like that. So here we go. We're just going to bring this top one down. 7x minus 6y equals negative 53. <clears throat> so then negative 2 times 2 is negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6y. Negative 2 times negative 13 is going to be a positive 26. So now we're going to add those up. Uh, 7 minus 4 is 7 minus 4 is 3. Our y's cancel out. 
So 3x equals, let's see here, negative 53 and 26 is negative 27. Uh, okay, so then we're going to divide both sides by 3. That's something I can do in my head at least. x equals negative 9. Because 9 times 3 is 27. Okay, so now we're going to plug that x back in. I'm going to use this same equation again because I don't like 7s. So we've got 2. Terrible 2. 2 times negative 9. Uh, minus 3y equals negative 13. So then 2 times negative 9 is negative 18 minus 3y. So from here, it's just you're just solving quote-unquote regular algebra. Uh, we'll put all the numbers on the right, variables on the left. <clears throat> so we'll add 18 to both sides. We have negative 3y equals 2, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 equals a positive 5. So then our y is going to equal negative 5 over 3. This is your answer. It's weird. It's a fraction. But again, it's just a number. It's just a number. So we're going to rewrite that as our point. So our x-coordinate is negative 9. And our y-coordinate is negative 5 over 3. And yes, I would prefer that you leave that as an irrational fraction. I'm sorry, an improper fraction. So now we've got an equation that neither one of them conveniently lines up for elimination. This might be an opportunity for substitution, but that doesn't look that decent either. So we're going to use elimination either way. Um, so we're going to go for our eliminating our X's. I mean, I just kind of arbitrarily picked it because I don't like sevens. Sevens are mean to me. Um, so we're going to multiply this top one by a two. I got that number from this coefficient right here. I know that if I take two times five and my plan is to do five with it by this other one, they will equal each other. And then I'll multiply this one by a negative 5. And again, I'm doing negative so that I just automatically distribute my negative sign. And then I can just add later on so that it cancels out. So then 2 times 5x, 10x, plus 2 times 3y, 6y, equals a negative 14. Negative 5 times 2 is going to be a negative 10x. There's where those x's cancel out. Negative 5 times 7 is a negative, I don't even know, 30, 35. 35y, and then negative 5 times 3 is going to be negative 15. So now we're just going to add going down. Those cancel out. Uh, let's see here. That's going to be a negative 29. And that's going to be a negative 29 as well. Well, that's convenient. So divide both sides by negative 29. We get y equals 1. Okay? So now we don't have to worry about these two equations. We can just... Uh, put y into uh, one of these upper equations up here. So I'm probably going to do that one. And, okay, so then we've got 2x plus 7y equals 3. Remember, that's our original equation. Shoot. We don't have a y there. We have a 1 equals 3. Uh, so that is just 7 right there. So we're just going to automatically move it to the other side. 2x equals a negative 4. x 
equals, we divide both sides by two, a negative two. So our final answer is gonna be negative two, one. Remember, it represents a point. Okay, once again, our coefficients aren't really gonna do something nice for us. Uh, so we'll go for x's. We're gonna try to eliminate one of those. So we're gonna use this coefficient up top. We're gonna use this coefficient on the bottom. And here we go. So multiply this top by four. Multiply this bottom by negative three. So four times three is 12. Four times nine is 36. Four times nine is still 36, just in case you're wondering. So now we're down here, this one, uh, negative three times four is a negative 12 X. Negative three times negative 12 is a positive 36 Y. Okay, that's getting weird. Uh, um, equals whatever negative three times 36 is. Uh, negative 108. Sure, we'll go for that. Uh, okay, so we'll eliminate, we'll add them all together. We'll eliminate the X's. Uh, and then we eliminate the Y's. And that's weird. So we get zero equals negative 72. That is not true. It is a false statement. So for this system of equations, they never touch. They never intersect. So our answer is no solution. Remember, if, it, if you get down to a true statement, 3 equals 3 or whatever, or x equals x, uh, then it is all solutions. It means they're talking about the same line. If it's you get down to a false statement, it is no solution. And it's everyone's favorite. Let's do a word problem. Oh my gosh. So our process for solving word problems, it's very similar to how we've always solved word problems. Uh, just this time, we have two equations. So I'm going to read through... Uh, the steps that I've talked about before, I'm just going to read through, skim through it. So Marcy bought a total of 20 used books and CDs during a yard sale for a total of a number. If books cost that much each and CDs cost that much each, how much did, uh, did she buy? Okay, so from there, we can define our variables. Um, so how much did she, how many of each did she buy? So let's say... Let's see here, she, brought, she bought 20 used books and CDs. So let's say B is the number of books she bought, she bought. C is the number of CDs she bought. So that means now I'm going to go back through and like actually process some of the information. Marcy bought a total of 20 used books and CDs during the yard sale. So that means that B plus C equals 20. And she spent a total of $54 and some change. If books cost, so now we're going to need a cost equation. So if books cost $150 each, so the total cost that she spent on books is going to be 1.50 times B. And CDs cost $5 each, same thing, $5 times the number of CDs she bought. And that total is going to be that number right there, 54.50. So it looks weird because there's decimals and whatever, but at this point, it's just two sets of equations, and we do know how to solve that. So if we were going to use elimination, we would... I would choose that top equation. Uh, I'm going to multiply that whole thing by 5. So what we're going to end up having is 5B plus 5C 
equals 100. <clears throat> uh, and then I guess we're going to have to subtract that bottom. So I'm going to change all the signs in there. So that's going to be 150B minus 5C equals a negative 54.50. And this is stuff that I'm probably going to use my calculator for because I don't feel like doing decimals. So our C's cancel out. So I'm just going to type this in real quick. 100 minus 54.50 equals, oops, equals 45.5. 5 minus 1.5. I should probably be able to do that in my head. 3.5B. So now we're going to divide both sides by 3.5. I know, it looks awesome. So then we're going to have B equals 45.5 divided by 3.5, 13. So she bought 13 books. So now we need to figure out how many CDs she bought. So we can just take those that B equals 13, plug it back into this equation again. So that means we have 13 plus C equals 20. C equals 20 minus 13, which equals seven. So she bought seven CDs and 13 books. Now, technically, I probably won't give you guys too much of a hard time if you don't label your answers, but do yourselves a favor, do me a favor, label your answers. Okay, so there's two more uh, word problems on this page. You try them and see if you can figure them out yourself, and we'll talk about them in class.